All right, here we go into the wonderful world of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, so remember, uh, it says hence, we're going to find the two eigenvectors. To find our eigenvectors, we need to find our eigenvalues. Okay, we remember all this. And so, if you remember in class, based on our discussions, we talked about the way we, we ultimately find our eigenvalues is we're going to need to do this by finding the determinant. Okay, what are we going to find the determinant of? So we're going to find the determinant of lambda multiplied by the identity matrix, or lambda i, minus matrix A. Okay, so that's our goal. We're going to find the determinant of all this, and more specifically, when all of this zeroes out. Okay, so that's, that's where our goal is. So all of this, when it uh, zeroes out. Okay, step by step by step. First things first, uh, we should find the, the uh, we got to do the subtraction here. So lambda times identity, the lambda times identity, if the identity is just 1, 0, 0, 1. If we multiply into lambda, it's going to be lambda, 0, 0, lambda. This is that right there. And from that, we're going to subtract matrix A. Matrix A is just 7, 3, 3, negative 1. And that should all equal 0. Great. Okay, well now this is just like positional subtraction, so we can find all of this. We'll do it right over here. Uh, lambda minus 7 is actually what I just said. It's lambda minus 7. Okay. Uh, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. And lambda minus negative 1 is like saying lambda plus 1. Okay, there we go. So this right here is lambda i minus a. That's what that is. So now we've got to find the determinant of all of that. So first things first, we multiply this. Um, I'll write it out so, to avoid some mistakes. So it's, so it's lambda minus 7 multiplied by lambda plus 1 minus, because we're doing determinant, negative 3 times negative 3, which is just 9. Okay. Multiply these together. Let's see what we get. So lambda times lambda is lambda squared. Negative 7 times lambda is negative 7 lambda. 1 times lambda is positive 1 lambda. And negative 7 times 1 is negative 7, and that's minus 9. And remember, this was all equal to 0. Okay, so we're just going to combine all these like terms. I'm going to do it right here because this is going to ultimately give us our eigenvalues. So if I combine all these like terms, I get lambda squared. Uh, negative 7 lambda plus 1 lambda is negative 6 lambda. Alrighty. And then going right here, uh, negative 7 plus 9 is negative 16. And then all equals zero. Okay, so looking at this, um, we can do this a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, ultimately, we're just trying to solve for lambda. Uh, we could do this by using the, um, the quadratic formula, or we could also look at negative 16 and see if we can shake out any factors that would help us get to 6. Uh, and either one can work. Uh, so if we looked at negative 16, I'm going to try to tackle this with the factors. If I looked at negative 16, and I see here that my b value is negative, so the larger of the factors needs to stay negative. So I have 1 and negative 16, and if I added those together, I would get negative 15. Well, that doesn't help. I need negative 6. Okay, so we could do 2 and negative 8. Okay, 2 times negative 8 is still negative 16, and 2 plus negative 8 is negative 6. So right there, now I know how to factor this thing, so I'm going to factor it. It's going to look like this. Lambda plus 2 multiplied by lambda minus 8 equals 0. And that's factored. And if I multiply these back together, I would get right back where I started. So if you're not confident about this process, you can do uh, multiply those back in just to double check where you need to be.
Okay, so now we have uh, a binomial multiplied by a binomial equals zero. That means one of these or both of these has to equal zero, which allows us to use my favorite, the zero product property. So we have here lambda plus two equals zero, and we also have here lambda minus eight equals zero. Okay, so I subtract two from both sides. My first lambda, I'll call it lambda one. I'm gonna have negative two. My second lambda, we'll call that lambda two. It's gonna be positive eight. And there you go. We have our two eigenvalues. Now we're gonna use these eigenvalues to find our eigenvectors. Okay, so to find these eigenvectors, uh, we're gonna start this process uh, actually right back up here. So we talked about this in class. You know, eigenvectors are the, these these scalar these vectors are these multiple multipliers acting on a big body of information, and it's going to change some things, and then some things won't change. And we're trying to figure out what doesn't change. That's that's really what an eigenvector is. Um, so we have this information, and we know it's going to get multiplied, okay, by something. That's actually what we're trying to find, and. Okay, and if it zeroes out, then we know that's that's our vector. Okay, that's our eigenvector. Okay, so uh, step one, we have these two. Where did I put them? Ah, here we go. We have these two lovely uh, values for lambda that we found. So essentially, the first step is to substitute in. Okay, so let, we can start with either one. We'll start with uh, this one. We'll start with the eight because I think the math will be a little bit more straightforward coming down here. I already started this. Sorry about that. Uh, so here we go. If I substitute in the eight. 8 minus 7 is 1. Okay. Negative 3 stays just where it is. Negative 3 stays just where it is. And then we have 8 plus 1, but well, that's 9. So I just substitute in my first eigenvalue. All right. And now we're in the business of finding ourselves the eigenvector. Okay. So if we look at this, um, Again, this is just, you're gonna say, go here, go here, go there, right? And we can multiply this out and, and we can do all the steps in the place value, but the pattern always remains the same, so this really helps us uh, go through these quickly. So here, that's one x, right? Plus negative three y equals zero. Okay, and you can actually solve that pretty fast. What we're going to do is we're just going to isolate uh, y on one side and solve for x. So we subtract uh, x from both sides. So we're going to get negative 3y equals negative x. And then we're going to get y all by itself. So we just divide both sides uh, by negative 3. So essentially what we're going to get here is y is, we divide by negative 3, uh, it's going to be x over 3, which is also the same as saying 1 third x. And that, okay, and that's where we're going to stop that process for now. We'll come back to it. Coming back over here, we'll say negative 3x plus 9y equals 0. Okay, so negative 3x plus 9y equals 0. <clears throat> Same idea, we're going to get y by itself and and this is just kind of finding the, uh, the output in terms of the input type of idea. So we add 3x to both sides. So we get 9y equals 3x. Okay. 9y equals 3x. Divide both sides by 9. That's going to be y equals 3 over 9x, which is the same as 1 third x. y is 1 third x. And that's a very good sign because we should. They should both. Uh, create the situation. That's how we know we did a good job. And so now all we have to do here to find one of our eigenvectors, and I'll, I'll put I'll put it up here for now. Let's just decorate this area. It's going to go here for now. Okay. So all we got to do now here to find one of our eigenvectors is if we stick in a one, like we had the x up here, we stick in the one. We're stuck in the one here, right? Well, what's one third times one? Well, I'd be left with y equals one third. So there you go. That is an eigenvector, and it's just like a ratio, it's a proportion. If I put in a two, this would be two thirds. If I put in a three, this would be three thirds, okay? So that is one 
of your eigenvectors. And you could use this ratio to calculate uh, an infinite number of eigenvectors because they were going to follow this ratio. Okay, let's zoom on down and do another one. So if we want to do it one more time, if we want to use our um, oops, we want to use our other eigenvalue of negative two, we can look at that right here. Okay, I'm just gonna use this to help us. <clears throat> so negative two minus nine is negative nine. And again, I'm just using this one right here. Okay. Negative three stays the same. Negative three stays the same. And negative two plus one is what? Negative one. Okay. So far so good. Now we're cooking. Put this in. This is us kind of laying the foundation to isolate and find that eigenvector based off of that eigenvalue. Okay. So, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. same idea. We say negative nine. Excuse me, we say negative 9x, negative 9x plus negative 3y, negative 3y equals 0. Same idea down here, we say negative 3x plus negative y equals 0. Okay, let's see what happens here. Again, we're trying to isolate and solve for y. So I add 9x to both sides, so I'd have negative y equals 9x. Divide both sides by negative 3, and I'd get y equals negative 3x. Okie dokie. Right here. Y equals 3x. Let's see, yep, that's good. And then I divide both sides by negative y, and again I get y equals negative x. Okay, that happy, happy day. Okay, so again, we can just kind of plug in here. Uh, we'll pick the space right here for this eigenvector. Okay, so uh, if I plug in a 1, well, what is 1 times negative 3? Negative 3. Yeah, uh, just like that, you got yourself two eigenvectors. Voila. Good job. You did great, and good luck on your quiz. Bye.